In this tutorial, we're going to cover some of the modes and some of the ideas that I use whenever I am coming up with some kind of imaginative or creative, creative improvisation for whatever playing service or whatever. All right. So now I'm going to play something here in the key of E flat and I'm doing it because I want to focus around C. And then I'm going to do a sort of walk up here, right? Okay, now what I'm showing you here, right? I try to play these things early on in the video because people just They'll skip past all the important stuff and then get to the, the actual stuff that doesn't mean that much, like the chords that I'm showing you. You'll learn the chords, but you got to get the principle behind it. Now, you've heard of scales, right? So a scale is just basically a set of predetermined tones that we use to which we draw melodies and we draw chords, right? So we would say something is in the key of E flat, and this is the key of E flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E flat. And the major tone that we're using is E flat. Everything revolves around you know, E flat. Another name for that would be called the tonic. Another another name for that would be called the Ionian. All right, and the Ionian uh, scale or mode, I should say, is just the first mode of the major scale. So we're just shifting every time we shift the notes. In other words, we play E flat, F, G, A flat, B, C. We're saying the note is on the bottom, right? And I use air quotes because really they're all over the keyboard, but this is the one that we tend to hear to support the harmony on the bottom and the melody, the sharper uh, sounding notes because they're gonna be louder and at a higher frequency, right? They're gonna, they're gonna stay sharp, they kind of cut through the human hearing. And this creates a nice bed, the, the bass for it to lay on in your left hand. But we can really, in, in actuality, use anything you, you know that belongs to that scale. We can say, we can uh, play from here, right, or here, or here, anywhere. So each mode just changes. So the first mode is going to be the major scale. It's called Ionian. So we switch every time we invert. All right. So there's seven notes in the major scale. So they're going to be seven modes that correspond to it. And this is just the major scale. Right, so we have the first mode, like I said, Ionian. Our second one is going to be Dorian. So we have F Dorian would be the same thing, but now we're playing it on the bottom, right? And this is where everything. Kind of revolves around, but it does give a different sound if you notice. All right, it has a more. Kind of jazzy, kind of saddish, jazzy kind of you know feel to it, and then of course there's the uh, the, the third mode would be the Phrygian, right? And this is the Phrygian mode. It has a very spooky sound because of this flat second going to the G, right? So we pretend like we make G a one, and we have a flat two, right? Continue in this vein and say we have the next mode would be, you know, uh, the fourth mode of the major scale we call the Solidian. This has a very uncertain sound, but it's very pretty, but it's still. It still kind of wants to resolve back to the one of the major scale, its parent scale. All right, and a mode is on a scale, scale is on a mode, They're different. It just transpositions of the major scale right they give you a, just a different color so you have the lydian and then now you have the mixolydian which would be used in gospel all the time right so you have the mixolydian all right and this is your, your mixolydian mode here and it has a very strong pull of course back to the parent but it still sounds different if we make that b flat our principal note and then we have uh the what's called aeolian our sixth one this would be c it's very solemn very sad 
Um, typically for us, it, it has this kind of sadish kind of sound in our in our what we're accustomed to in our culture. And then there's the that's the sixth one. The seventh one now is going to be the the weirdest one. It's called the Locrian, right? And this one it doesn't really resolve. It, it's because of this. You have this minor third and a minor fifth, right, in the key of E flat. So. Back to E flat. There's no real resolution for this. It just kind of, if you play it as chords, it never really resolves because of the diminished chord, right? And then we got back to one, which is our parent scale, the major scale. Now we would use those things. What I, all I did there, I just kind of quickly just grabbed something out of thin air. And just threw some melodies together but this is used all the time in gospel music all right now that we got that foundation it's important that you understand that i have other videos on modes and i just did a super quick crash course on uh the mode this the seven modes of the major scale but just so to establish what i'm what i was doing before now we know what we were playing right we said we did something like this in the key of e flat right and um yeah so we did the the all right and we did the walk up Okay, those chords are not just something I memorized or, uh oh crap, what happened to the, you son of a gun, it crashed on me? Yeah, I just realized that my 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 on-screen keyboard just kind of just went kaputs. Um, I'm glad I saw that because I've been teaching this whole lesson without it. So if you didn't catch it in the beginning, what I did, the chords were just a walk up um, in the key of uh, E flat. something you know to that effect so that's what that is now and everything i just explained was the foundation of what i'm going to show you how i would get something like that there, there's a, quite a few things going on here and i can't cover all of this in a single video but what i can't show you right is what i'm targeting and what i'm supporting so when gospel with gospel you have a couple things going on with music in general right we play chords we'll play like say we play a, a in the key of E flat, we got a one chord, and then we go to a four, right? Four chord, a five chord, and then a six chord, and then a four chord, right? That is not, those aren't target chords. Those are chords that support a particular structure and a harmony. So we have, you know, I would say to you a Nashville number system, I'd say, play, play your one, your five, you know, verse CCM six, and then go to four. Back to one, so this is pattern, a sequence, a motif of, of chords. And that's usually used to, support a song why that isn't gospel is because somebody made a joke i think i saw this on tiktok like and ask a gospel musician to make music and it's just a series of tension you know it's a lot of it that's exactly what it is i had to laugh because it's a series of the to make tension to bring more tension to, to resolve it to have more tension it's just a never-ending cycle of tension but this is not much tension you know there's there are they are uh chords that are diatonic to the key of e flat you know one and then you have the four or, or five and six and then four, right? So, but what I did is nothing like that. And this is the problem people have. They try to approach gospel music, gospel slash jazz and, you know, blues is all mixed up with the same mindset. And they just think just chordally or the key that I'm in. And I keep telling people, forget about the key that you're in. That's just something that somebody made up to kind of give you a, a framework to work around. But your imagination will open up once you say, Forget the key. What scale are we doing? What, what am I trying to tell the air? Your brain and your ear don't care no, nothing about no keys. What it cares about is what makes sense to it because music is a creative medium and it's, you know, it's personal to everyone. We just use scales and keys and these kind of things to give ourselves a framework. So now we're playing this, right? It's in the key of E flat. And what I did here, I just, I'm targeting, right? The first chord I want to target is C, okay? Because if you look at what I did here, I just walked up. I went, so this has that, the, na, 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 that, that kind of resolution, you know, to C. The reason that is, is because I'm going to show you now the melodic minor scale. And I talk about that in like almost all my videos because it's just a part of gospel music. You hear this all the time. The melodic minor scale and the diminished scale are huge and the blue scale as well in gospel. It's just a staple to it. So this melodic minor scale, I'm going to do it. And I said to you before, I'm going to do it in C, right? And when I say in C, it's going to be the C melodic minor scale. Now, when I said to you before, scale is not a mode, mode is not a scale. 
we don't say, you know, the mode of E flat major. We just say the scale. But if we're talking about E flat major being a part of the modes, then in turn, we would just say, well, it's the first mode of the major scale, which is called Ionian. Well, in this case, melodic minor is the first mode of the melodic minor scale. The first mode is going to be the name of the scale. The mode name, the first mode, and the scale name are the same, but everything else changes. That's, this is the normal convention with modes, right? So we have our C melodic minor. Now, in its C, let me, before I tell you or ask you why I would get into that, C melodic minor, right? C, D, B flat, F, G, A, B, and C. It's basically, it sounds like, you know, uh, happy or sad. Sad, 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 and wait, happy, and then sad. <laughs> And you know, happy and so on. That's how I look at it. Major is happy to me, and most people in Western uh, culture, and the minor is sad, right? So, why this scale though? Just because it represents the tonic or the one, right? It's going to be a minor chord. So, remember in E flat before, E flat major, I'm targeting the C chord. What C chord? Well, if you look at the chords that I played, I walked up. I'm targeting a minor chord, a minor seventh chord. Now, when we think about chords and scales, scales, everything, all music theory is, it's not music truth, it's just to give us a framework of what we're looking for to do. So, you know, people have some kind of standard. Hence, you know, you could look this up, it's called a 12 tone equal temperament. Because back in the day, people just had all kinds of different tones or whatever. And if you try to transpose a song, it sounded a hot mess because there was no standard. But of course, the spacing between the notes and the keyboard now all have a standard. But with that, it gives us a you know a point of reference and something in which to work. Like I said, a framework. But as we're developing that now, we're using our creativity to say, hey, well, it's C minor, right? And of course, there's no C minor seventh in the scale of the melodic minor. And this would be in gospel or slash jazz when you ascend, because it's different in classical. It's the same ascending, all right, as it is descending. The C. Uh, melodic minor and it just has one change in it which is the E flat but this is a powerful powerful change because it allows us to do a whole lot with the other chords in that actual scale and for a quick reference right we've called the first one the first mode of the scale the melodic minor scale when we invert that now well our inversion is just to take the second and we're going to put the second on the bottom and right? start with the bottom and we start here right so we go uh, with our second mode right the second mode of the melodic minor scale has a name. It's called the Dorian mode with a flat at second. Dorian would be D Dorian would be just the second mode. It would just be regular, but it has a flat second, right? Next one. The third mode is the Lydian mode, but it's augmented, so it's known as the Lydian augmented. So if we started here, right, and put this on the bottom, we have E flat F, just in this case, G. A, and then we have a augmented fifth, B. The fourth mode is known as the Lydian dominant. So we have a Lydian mode. All right, this major would be, well, we have a Lydian mode, which would be G, F, uh, F, G, A, B, C, D, and then now what makes it dominant is the E flat. All right, and the fifth mode has two names to it. The, uh, it was referred to once as the Hindu, uh, scale, but I guess somebody got mad, so they named it, and which is, I can understand why they would change the name. I don't understand why they changed the name, but I know that I understand why they gave it the name. Um, it might be easier to remember, or it might make more sense, I don't know. But this is the fifth mode G, A, B, C, D, E flat, F, G. So it's the Mixolydian mode, but with a flat six. All right, and if I, uh, not finally, we have the sixth mode here, which would be the Aeolian mode, all right, with a flat or diminished fifth. A, B, C, D, E flat, F, G, or D sharp, G, A. And finally, the seventh mode is known as this uh, super Locrian. That's what somebody decided, you know, the super Locrian or the altered scale. So it just starts from B, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C. Now, with these seven modes, right, where it depends on where we start and what we want to do. We have a lot of options and things that we can do. Now, we get our chords from our scales. So let's jump back to that mode real quick. Remember C, D, E, flat, F, G, A, B, and C. The first, if you took triads, the first chord you're gonna get is gonna be a C minor chord, right? A, beautiful. Second, it's gonna be a minor chord. The third, however, is gonna be an augmented chord if we use triads, E flat, G, B. 
the fourth, we have a major chord. All right. The fifth, we have a major chord. These are major. Tri these are triads now. Triad meaning a three note chord. Then the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. We have a diminished. Okay. A diminished chord. And then the the seventh chord. Right. Six seven. Here we have a diminished chord, or we have a augmented right, triad. Versus this would be a major. This would be. I'm sorry. Not augmented. What am I saying? Augmented. Augmented would be fifth and be raised. Well, we could do a raised or augmented. We could. Um, but let's just say we have a diminished. All right. Or uh, augmented. Right. So either way would work. But they're all the scale tones that make up these chords. Now the way this works for you and I is that in gospel, you know, no one is playing just triads. But triads are beautiful. They're great just like any flavoring or season in the food but we have to mix it with things so we're going to just extend them now if i took the first chord the first chord if i went up and i did a uh, technique called stack thirds right I stack the thirds here all right and what i have here this is called a major chord but it's a minor chord all right it's a mouthful but it's also a seventh chord because you have the b and the seventh so we would call this chord a major minor seventh or minor major seventh depending on on um, how you feel about diversity and equity and minor being first or major being second and all that other stuff, right? So it's a minor major seventh chord. And the sec second chord is gonna give you a minor seventh chord, right? So then the third chord, we're gonna have this chord here, all right? We have a E flat major seventh with an augmented fifth, all right? Third chord or fourth chord is gonna give us a dominant, a dominant seventh chord. If we just did now, you know, uh, we extended it and we stacked the thirds, okay? Um, and stacking thirds is just this you either stack a major or minor third. So, this is a major third away from F is a major, A is a major third away from um, F, C is a minor third away from A, and E flat is a minor third away from C. So, we're stacking thirds. That's how we make our chords up, all right? And now we have the, the fifth chord is going to be a dominant uh, seventh chord. So, pay attention here. We have two dominant seventh chords in this melodic minor scale of ours, right? Then now we have another chord here. We have an A, all right, a minor, uh, A minor, I guess you call it A minor, yeah, that's right, an A minor seventh chord with a flatted fifth, all right, or a half diminished chord, A minor seventh half diminished, it's a mouthful, all right, and then finally we have this chord here, uh, B diminished, well, B half diminished with B minor seventh, or we can change it to a B, all right, seventh here with a flat five. Now, I'm saying all this to say that this gives us some options on what we're going to do. When we look at the chords and the things that I played, now let's pay attention really quickly. Excuse me, I'm going to shift gears with you, right? And I'm targeting C, right? All right, C minor, right? And now I can do other things here. And then continue in that vein, right? These first chords here come from something else called the diminished scale. And that's for another video that I actually did. And I'll explain that again another time. And this is not the focus here, but the target of the chord is because I'm playing this chord here, G, all right? G seventh with a flat of nine. And I'm playing an A diminished seventh, and then I'm uh, B diminished seventh, and then I'm going to resolve here. I could resolve here and stop, but why do that, right? Because you know, hey, we're in services, talk music, or we're someplace, and we need to continue. So I'm going to take the C now and want to target the F, all right? So uh, chords and fifths usually want to target each other, meaning or target the, the chord in gospel, the chord A fourth up. So one, two, three, four, G goes in the C. One, two, three, four, C goes in the F. And we can and, you know, add infinitum and all that. You know, they just go in fourth. So C is going to target the F chord. So I'm going to, going to give the attention to the F chord, and I want to target the F chord. So I'll play... Uh, this and then continue diminished where in the world this come from man what are you doing Chris what are you playing why are you playing that okay well I'm playing that because of what I just showed you the scale mode uh, the scale that I, I showed you before is a melodic minor well the first chord is a minor so everything just like the E flat major wants to kind of pull back to this right to some sense but I'm probably going to contradict myself because it's a little bit different with the melodic minor as far as what your ear is hearing. Um, because we're so used to scales saying, okay, I'm playing the you know major scale, yay, yay. And this is where it goes, right? It's very simple. But when you change things around, you, you're trying to get out of the, the, the theory mindset 
You need theory to give your framework, but use your ears and your imagination. All right, it's not music science, or it is maybe, but it's not music fact. It's just theory. Now, um, this is our our, our scale at the the major key that we're in, right? So now what we'll do, we'll shift gears, and then once we go now, we target the F chord. Uh, what did I do here? I did this, and then I went. All right, C minor, yeah, D diminished seventh. Okay, and then I ended up here, and then I could have done this. Um, uh, what am I? Doing? Right, because I'm I'm targeting this F this minor F chord to give me a two chord for E flat for two, and then five, and then play one. However, I'm not going to target or play that F chord and concentrate on it so much. I'm going to create a color tone by using the C melodic minor because I'm here, right? So I can do this. Um, keep doing it to that. And then, so, versus, uh, I'm right. could do that, all right, because the G is on top, it's our melody, but we have our F as our bass tone, right, and we kind of make an ambivalent, almost like a, a you know, like a sus sound, it is a, a sus seventh chord, right, so it's not really committed to anything, all right, it's kind of in the air, but this, where would this come from, but if you pay attention to my uh, scale tones, look at what I'm doing. Look at these notes. Does it look familiar to you? See what I'm doing there? This is where we get the chords from. So I say, don't think of the key you're in, think of the scales you're using, what options that you have. Because you can get a minor chord in two other places. For C minor, you can get it in the key of B flat, which would give you a two or uh, in the key of E flat, uh, A flat would be a three chord. So it's only gonna be a minor in three places besides E flat is six, A flat is a, two, a three chord, and uh, B flat is gonna be a two chord, right? But in this case, we're using it as, as a six chord in the key of E flat, right? But you have this here, right? And then we have this. Again, where did this come from? Oh, all right, I played that all jacked up, but. have this here so it's the same scale so I'm extending it again we did the walk up to target the C minor seven and then we're targeting F minor are we because I asked the big question here I don't know are we what do you think another question right like I did in that other video so what I'm doing here is this playing the G chord all right to give me a two chord the two chord is the F in the key of E flat and then now we come, or rather, and then right this chord here, and your melody always, you always want to concentrate on that on your left hand. So once we're here, and I can move and go other places now, right, from one or two, and then use the same concept of the melodic minor in a different key. For example, we can take the melodic minor in the key of e in A flat. All right, uh, A flat melodic minor would be just like A flat major, right? But with a minor third. And that one note makes a difference. So with that chord progression, I'm gonna tell you why that works. Okay, I'm gonna show you why that works. Uh, melodic minor, A, uh, A flat. The, the, the thing like I was starting to say before about contradicting myself is that the melodic minor, unlike the major scale, right? Like we have, you know, C major or whatever major, like C major, right? We have the five chord. Yay, five. I'm trying to find a pitch. And one. Right. So it wants to resolve here. This is where we it wants to hang out at and be good, all right? But that's what your major scale. Normally you have the five, which is called the dominant, and then the one, which is called the tonic, right? So there's a five, one chord progression. What you need to understand is that that's that five, one chord progression. So even in, in, in E flat major, right? We have the five, five, or some kind of five chord, and then it wants to come home, right? But with the melodic minor scale, it's the opposite. When you look at C melodic minor, this is why in gospel, the melodic minor scale is always used to get to a major chord. And remember, like I told you before, 
with the melodic minor scale, right? You have minor, all right? The first one is minor, second one is um, uh, minor, all right? Then we have the augmented, then we have a dominant or major, major, dominant. So it wants to resolve for some reason to the one, two, three, four, five. It wants to resolve up a fifth instead of a fourth or down a fourth because they're opposite, right? So in other words, look, listen to this. Oh wait, I messed that up. <laughs> I set it up where you could, where it wants to resolve here. But let me get your ear kind of attuned to this, um, to this what I'm trying to do. All right, so. Okay, yes, there we go. Now we have, right, I'm gonna go to, in G, to G major, right? Right, so now you have the melodic minor. You see how I major ear go to G major with what I did? Before I wanted to go back to C minor, this is what I'm saying, because it's just theory. Something we made up just to kind of help us to understand. It, it's a poor representation or facsimile Use use these faxes back in the day of what we actually are hearing in our heads and what our brain is actually processing. All right, so C minor, and it wants to go to the G major. Whoops. That was <laughs> so that's you know that's what what you would do. It, it wants to resolve to that. And why I'm saying that is this: if we listen to what I just did before, right? We did the walk up, right? So we have this A flat melodic minor. And then, so that minor wants to resolve to one. Like I told you, I, I, that chord, that minor fourth chord wants to resolve, like in minor fourth with the key of e, A flat, e, e flat major. But this is not E flat major, this would be playing in the key of, this would be the fifth mode of this, but it would really be, say, uh, A flat mode of minor, just to keep it simple, right? It wants to resolve to here, and then we set it up here, and this is very special, because typically your diminished chord wants to go up, like, you know, you're in church, you know, it always wants to go up, up, all the time, but because of the way this is set up here, right, we're not going up, this chord here, all right, because of the way of the, the tones follow. All right, rather here, and then we have the five chord, and then we can resolve. So that's how we would use and kind of manipulate this melodic minor scale. Now, if you're a beginner, and this is like Greek to you, it literally some of it literally is Greek. Um, like the modes, that's where we get it from. Just, you know, I want to encourage you that you can actually overcome this. This, I, I, well, I was at a place I didn't understand any of this and made, it was literally Greek to me and I'm, I don't speak any other language but English, shame on me, right? I'm an American, this is kind of what we do, unfortunately. Understand that you can get better. Keep practicing. Now, if you're having a problem and, and you're just starting out, if, if this, this, this is crazy to you, you definitely want to check out my beginner's course. My beginner's course is called Black gospel keyboards for beginners 101 foundations and this will give you what you need for the, the foundation the basis for this to make sense people go to their friends they they spend all day on youtube whatever they're trying to look for things and it, it doesn't make sense to them i'm going to give you the foundation in my course my beginner's course to be able to put all the things that i'm teaching you you're not going to get it in a week no but you put it in the work you put it in the effort i promise you i will guide you and help you to get to exactly not just to where i am but to beyond me wherever you want to go but you have to have the foundation. So if you want to check that out, and if you want to have that to be a part of your repertoire and a learning aid, check out the link in the description, and it'll take you right to my website. Now, God bless you. I will see you in the next video.